Let's keep moving because we want to have the whole afternoon for more useful things. Um, let's talk a little bit about tables. And my first message about tables is let's not. Okay? Use tables only when you really need to communicate the precise <laughs> values of the numbers. You know, maybe parameter settings or something like that. But don't use tables when it's um, simply to ask your reader to interpret numbers and compare numbers. That's much better done in a figure. Okay? Readers tend not to pay much attention to the contents of tables. They take up space. I personally would say a better idea is put the whole data set in supplementary materials. But generally tables, generally, not always, generally tables can be expressed better as figures. If you must, here we go with you know, my usual edits. Um, you're basically permitted only horizontal lines, no vertical lines, no boxes, no pretty formatting from Microsoft Word, okay? And the idea is you have a top line, a bottom line, a line that separates the header from the body, and occasionally you can have lines like this to group subheadings within a heading. But in general, you're using only horizontal lines and you put a caption immediately above the table. So this is strange because with figures, you separate the caption from the figure, but with tables, it goes above the table. And that's convention and it's also how these elements of a manuscript are taken by the publisher and put into a published paper. So again, there's the information you're allowed. No color, no bold, or bold only when it's indicating something in the table, uh, but never like bold header or all of one col column being bold. No rotated text. So the plate table is placed at the end of the manuscript after the figures. Pages are not numbered, one table per page. And they should look like this. Okay, something simple. Actually, I see something I don't like because this is centered and that's not. Um, should be a period there. I told you I'm pathological about editing. Um, but really, you know, keep it simple. You're just trying to pass on a list of numbers to your reader. Okay, so too often you do your figures, you write your results and methods, you write your introduction and discussion, and you say, I'm done. And the first thing you want to do is run to your advisor and say, Dr. Advisor, will you please read this for me? That is the very worst thing you can do. And so what I commonly say to my students is, you're done, good, you have a complete draft. Congratulations. Don't touch it for one day. Get a little distance and then go to the most comfortable place you can think of for reading. Might be reading in bed, might be reading at a coffee shop, wherever you are comfortable and awake and concentrated, sit down, read it, proof it, edit it. Don't make your advisor suffer through a first draft. So, Reading for consistency <coughs> and format is very different than reading for content. So I put this up and your eye should be jumping around and seeing some things. You know, one of my 
favorite things to hate. Look at this. There's an in-text citation. It looks like the same paper. But what's different? Yeah. But everybody forgets about that. And in fact, there were a whole bunch of things, but when you edit, you want to edit for flow, you want to edit for consistency. So see, I added the comma there. De that depends on the format of the journal. Um, but editing is, of a first draft, it's always going to be substantive. It's never going to be, you know, you save the file and email it to your advisor and it's ready. Now, maybe I'm showing my age, which is to say hand markup of manuscripts, but if I'm 50 right now and Arturo is 51, 53, aha. Um, if I'm 50 right now, that's 20 more years before I, I hope 20 years before I die or retire. And so that's <laughs> four generations of graduate students that are still going to have to deal with hand editing. Okay? That is if they want my comments or if they want to be my student. But there are, if you Google this, there are lots and lots of uh, compendia of of editing marks. And I don't like using, you know, kind of all of the little details, like, you know, three underlines to two underlines, but you do have to be very consistent. If you're not consistent, then the typesetter and the copy editor will not understand you. And that, that will create new problems in your manuscript <laughs> when it's going on to publication. So you might as well just pick a system and start using it. And there are some conventions. You know, the, if you want to change the order of two things, that changes their order. If you want to delete something, that means to delete. If you want to insert something, you insert it, etc. Okay, but again, there are very clear um, systems and you, know, you can find five or six just by, um, by a quick Google search. My point is, don't like circle things and write a note. Could you please change the order of this because it'll get misinterpreted. And so that's the sort of thing my students get back. That was at one of the points when I had to take pictures, so, you know. But you can see it's pretty dense. And it's almost impossible to make all of those changes and have it come out perfect. So we go through over and over and over again. And I'm not sure who hates it more, me or my students. But the very worst thing that happened to me recently is I have a, a student who is I'm co-advising, but he's based in Iran. And he sent me a manuscript. It was reasonably final manuscript, but um, his English needed some work. And so I worked on it, and it was maybe five or six hours to mark up the whole paper. I took the photographs, made them into a PDF, made them into individual PDFs, put them all together into one PDF, saved it, downsized it, and sent him a link so that he could pull it off of Dropbox. <coughs> and then I cleaned up, you've seen that my, my computer's getting full, so I cleaned up my computer, I got rid of the photos, got rid of the individual PDFs, and then a few days later I edited something for another student. The default name for the concatenated PDF is binder1.pdf, and so I just saved over the previous one. And then the student in Iran wrote to me and said, uh, Talon, I wasn't able to download the, the one that you put up for me. Can you please send me again? And I realized there's no 
grouped PDF, there are no sole PDFs, there are no pictures. And I had recycled the manuscript, and so I literally had to re-edit the whole thing again. <laughs> no, because I sent a Dropbox link. I didn't send, send the PDF. So anyhow, that's the sort of markup. And my students know that when this gets down to, see, that's even worse. Um, when, my, when this gets down to just a couple of marks on a page, I'm going to say, go ahead and submit it. It's ready. The worst thing I can do, this is me personally, is just write notes in the margin and not edit. Because that's basically my subtle way of saying it's not worth editing. You need to rework this entirely. Yeah, there are some of those. So that's the way you want to see it, right? And see, this paragraph still had some work to do, but it was simple enough in the corrections, and I knew that student was pretty careful. It was simple enough that, yeah, it was ready to go. Okay, here's a little bit of trivia, and these are my opinions. And don't, don't try to get all of this in. You'll have the PDF. You can look at it later if you care. But there are some constructions in English that are just plain ugly or bad. There are four of these slides, by the way. While refers to time. So I can't say while Jean is wearing a, an orange shirt, uh, Lindsay is wearing a black blouse. It's whereas. You sound like a lawyer, but that's the correct word. E.G. versus I.E. So E.G. means exempli gratia in Latin, whereas this should be in, in um, italics. I.E. means id est. That means both of them are abbreviations. So it's E period, G period, comma, unless the journal has a really, really weird style. Um, generally, they are followed by a comma because when you say, for example, comma, this, this, <coughs> this, okay? And it's, it's the same word, it's just in Latin. But EG means for example, and IE means that is. So make sure you use the correct one for the, uh, the right use. If you mean um, there are lots of things uh, that are read in the world, e.g. my cup, e.g. the table coverings, right? That's different from I mean that we should go to Benin, i.e. the country in West Africa, comma, and not the state in Nigeria, right? That is, but there is only one Benin the country, so it is not e.g. Compose, comprise are actually quite opposite in their means. I'm not going to go in through in great detail all of these. Because since and as have different levels of attribution of causation, so you should use each one in the right place. Although and though, also kind of one is more emphatic than the other. Again, there are four of these. Salud. Um, the word vary. In essentially all cases, it can be removed. There is essentially no situation in which you need to use the word very. The construction there is, there are is always a weak construction. There are five birds in the tree outside. Five birds are in the tree outside. I used two fewer words and I made a more direct sentence. See, this, these, those should never be used as nouns. This computer, but not this is, right? This computer is. 
Now, make a difference between how we speak and how we write, okay? I don't care what you do when you speak, if I can understand you. But when you write, this, these, those should never be nouns. Passive versus active verbs. So this bird was processed by XJV approaches, can very easily be restated as we used XJV approaches to process this bird. It's just reorganizing the sentence, but it makes your language much more direct. 